Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and Panda Westfall. And today I'm talking about Facebook, the bane of the never PHP community. The people that just hate PHP and can't stand PHP. And every time you bring up Facebook as the uh, main poster child of PHP, they throw a fit, they get angry, they get violently opposing this stuff. They say, how can Facebook be using PHP? It's sort of like that big gigantic blimp out there that says PHP is real and can be used in enterprises. Now, I got a post in a comment in my um, on this channel, right? Actually, saying very happily by somebody who was a never PHP -er, that PHP that Facebook has dropped PHP and switched to uh, to hack something by the uh, that they have created their own language. It's not just any old tech company, right? It's not a Dropbox. It's not a digital ocean. This is Facebook, the fang, right? One of the five biggest companies out there. That's the first thing. Like, it's not a hundred billion dollar company. This is a multiple hundred billion dollar company that supposedly uses PHP. So that's one issue. The other issue is that it's just so wide, right? If a company can use PHP that handles social network and has a billion users. You running a little small little startup with maybe a million users should probably be able to handle PHP. So you can guess how happy these people were when they found out that PHP has been dropped by Facebook. Now, what happened is that Facebook dropped PHP to switch to hack. But what a lot of people didn't know, right, was that hack is actually a dialect of PHP. They didn't change their code base. They didn't change the millions of lines of code that PHP was already written. And what they came up with was that basically they're going to compile the PHP into C and then go straight into the machine and get the performance from there. So they will bypass the PHP 5.6 Zen engine. Now, a lot of people are claiming and they're hoping that this is the death of PHP. It's the end. Like if Facebook is gone, PHP doesn't have its big leviathan of support uh, behind this language. And that is incorrect because what has happened, right? PHP came back. That's why I wrote, I made that video about PHP is back. And it came back with PHP 7. Now, if you study the performances, it is so shocking that PHP 7 is actually outperforming the HHVM, amazingly. So there's now this point of the journey, right, where a lot of new people are coming into the language or a lot of companies are looking at the language and saying, look, we don't need to go down the HHVM route. We'll go by the traditional PHP 7 route because of the performance uh, improvement. And I, for one, will admit 5.6 was lagging a lot of the newer languages in terms of performance. It was still pretty good, but it could be a lot better. And when 7 came, so that is a misconception that, that Facebook actually kicked out PHP. It's hack, it's a dialect of PHP. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to show you guys. I'm going to load hack onto my uh, desktop uh, using uh, Docker. And I'll show you that it's actually PHP in case you don't believe me. Okay. All right. So I'm loading PowerShell here and you can see Docker is starting up. So I've already installed Docker. I did a tutorial earlier. This is what the desktop version looks like in Windows. And I have no images or containers started here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to configure our Docker compose and launch an image of the HHVM. And there's instructions that I've already done. I've created a folder there. You can see that uh, HHVM. And here are the containers uh, waiting for it to start. And basically uh, you can see I have a previous container. Let's just delete that one first. And I will use Docker Compose to actually start that uh, from the beginning. So it's one simple command. Uh, just type Docker Compose up. Okay, and that's basically starting the uh, Docker Composer. And um, I did a tutorial about this. You can take a look at it. I'm including it in the description and in a thumbnail over here. 
Now, what I'm going to do is just open up Notepad++ because we're not going to do a lot of coding. I'm just going to show you how similar HHVM is to PHP. And you'll see that it is so similar because you can actually do PHP. So let's take a look at it here. Um, in the, I've actually mounted the public drive over to port 80, uh, 8001. And you can see the command there. And on top, you can see the familiar um, question mark HH. And PHP is uh, question mark PHP. But just to show you that this is working and mounted, I've changed the text. HHVM is working in Docker. And there's only one difference here uh, in my feeling is that you just have to put your code inside the function. So unlike the scripting language PHP, they're thinking more like a Java thing that everything has to be in a function. So I'm just going to write down why it's so, familiar, so similar in a notepad over here and actually run a couple of tests there. So basically I'm going to start Docker, I'm going to launch uh, HHVM. I've got it mounted to a local drive so that we can do stuff and update it without restarting our container. And then I'm going to run some PHP commands like PHP variables. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And the good old uh, dollar sign. So just put it inside the main function, main void. This is very Java. But look at the way I define my variable. So I equals hello. Or let's say Lionel the tech lead. And I'm just going to echo it. Similar command in PHP. And there you go, right up there. So variables obviously working. Let's go and grab some other stuff that we that W3 Schools as actually defines PHP. And uh, numbers is the next thing that we want to do. So um, I'm going to define some numbers. Um, I'm going to add a bracket, uh, a break first so that you, you can see the difference between the strings. And let's say I'm going to define i equals 10.334. Basically, let's run a floor command uh, function, floor function in PHP. And there you go, 10. So HHVM has PHP functions, okay? We can do some operations, some uh, mathematical operations using um, that. And then the next one we're going to try is, let's try to do a conditional, you know, all logic, very important uh, to run that. So a simple one here, I'm just going to, if else, run a command there. Just going to type that one out there. And of course, add, uh, let's add a header over here so that there's actually some gaps between our lines. So reload that, bang, less than 2,000. So if in conditionals are working with the HHVM, um, so this is kind of like a PHP dialect over here, right? You know, you're able to write different commands that look almost similar. Or the only difference is that it's got it inside the entry point and it's inside a function, okay? No big deal. Uh, you've seen this usually in Java where you have to uh, main uh, write something called void. That means it returns nothing. Uh, let's try something else. PHP loops. Okay. Got to use loops when you're doing any programming language, right? Because that's the power of, of a, a software. You want to loop. So just going to do a simple for loop over here. I'm not going to do too many. Uh, when I wasn't recording, I did like a thousand of it, but you know, it's it's very consistent. So basically just a simple one, let's echo it. The count is, uh, just gonna echo the count uh, and just use a dot. I haven't tried the curly brackets and some of the other notations that PHP has. But this is just basically very consistent for loop that's there. And you can see it works, right? It works perfectly, looping through, bracketing. Um, okay, now um, the last thing I want to do is what doesn't work. So the first thing I tried is a array. So one of the problems with it is that the HHVM is a little bit more strict on their arrays, okay? No PHP assigning arrays, you actually have to define it using uh, vectors or key sets or dictionaries. 
much more uh, what do you call adult style language, much more strict. So you won't be able to do this kind of assignment. You'll have to actually either define it as a dictionary or a vector or that kind of stuff. Whereas the PHP itself, right, it's very flexible arrays. You can have some, you know, you can have a uh, dictionary on one side. There's no dictionary, sorry, on PHP. You can have um, assigning the variable as uh, sometimes without a key. You can add a key in between. It can be between integers and strings. There you can see at the bottom, I've defined a dictionary. So that's one difference, okay? Not that you can't do this in PHP, right? And then the last one is um, how you actually define the arrays that you actually have to name it with the array. Um, so it's a lot more f uh, formal in terms of the HSVM system. But where this has actually been changing uh, the difference between, this is five point something, right? PHP five. And when they developed HSVM, they, PHP didn't have all this stuff. So I'm just going through some of the features there and I wanted to talk about the functions. And now, as you guys know, uh, this is how you define a function in H HVM, which is you have to name the variables, you have to, uh, it's strict input types, and you have to place it on top of the entry function. So this is very uh, Python, very Java, you know, nothing sits outside. So here I'm just got a simple, uh, I'm gonna define X and Y, and I'm gonna run the function on top. And you can see that the function has to have returns, it has to have uh, the types, and you can see that uh, I got the answer 35 over there when I added the two up together. But in PHP 7, right, later I'll show you, they actually can define strict types. So this you don't need this anymore when you're doing, you can use PHP 7 and you can get the strict types uh, defined out for you. So you can go into the HSVM uh, documentation and you can actually uh, see that they want strict types. But here I'm just popping into the PHP uh, 7's web page and you can see here, right, that um, you can define the type int and you can also make it strict. So you don't need HHVM anymore to do this. You can do this with normal, uh, there you go, declare strict and type. You can see it in the first line. So that's one of the things. Strict array is another thing. Um, they've got some other um, functionality in terms of async functions, um, which PHP doesn't have. You have to use SWO or something like that. So basically, HSVM only necessary back when it was 5.6. I think with PHP 7, we've done most of this stuff. So the bottom line is if it looks like PHP, smells like PHP, it probably is PHP. But you don't need HSVM anymore. You've got PHP 7 that has all these wonderful jazz like speed and strict types. And then that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.